Hi there, it's Huang, Product Manager at SAP. Today I would like to show you the monitoring capabilities of SAP Process Automation. Monitoring is a key component that any tool requires to see where you are and if things are not going as planned, how can I react on it? Once a project is deployed and have been utilized during runtime, you might want to check out the current status of your processes and manage your project artifacts. In this video, I would like to show you how this is done with SAP Pros Automation. Let's have a look into the system. We start our journey in the lobby, as you see, and on the top center corner, you can see the tab Monitoring. Let's click on that. Once we click on Monitoring, we see a dashboard with uh, some tiles, as you see. Um, the first one being uh, Monitoring Processes and Process Instances. The second one, automations, and the third one, events. Um, this is focusing on process instances, so processes that have run, that you triggered multiple times, you can monitor them in detail here. While the bottom part is about managing the artifacts itself that have been deployed, such as processes, automations, and the visibility scenario in your Fiori launchpad. So let's go into the process and workflow instances first. We click on that tile and you should see a, a list of all your running instances. You can see that a filter has been by default applied, which filters on the currently running processes or the ones that have been failed so far. Um, you can search them here on the list on the left side by scrolling up and down or by um, typing in something into your search filter here on the top right such as purchase to search for a purchase requisition process for example. If you don't want to um, have this filter in here you can simply click on this uh, turquoise bar and then click on the reset button here to get rid of the filters and then press OK. Once you've done that, you can also see processes that have been completed. So once you select a process here on the left side, let's say I select this one here, you can see the detailed view of that process instance on the right side panel here. You can see, for example, the definition ID of that process instance, the person who has started this process, when it has been started, and when this process instance has been completed. If during a um, process runtime any errors have occurred, you can see them here under error messages. The way it works is that the, um, the whole process context is being saved here in the monitoring. You can see that this one, for example, if a form has been filled out to start a process, these, is, uh, these are the information that this person has been filled out. You can see it here and you can see how it has been passed on to the next step and so on. In this example here, you can see that an action has been called. Um, so an API call has been triggered in a backend system. And the ID of that purchase requisition ID has been sent back to the process context here. And here in the monitor monitoring capabilities, I can see that ID here in this context. If I scroll down below, I can also see the execution log. So see. All the, it, all the process steps after one another that have been executed. I can see that this person has started this process instance here. I can see that the next step was to, um, yeah, that an approval task is um, available and that this recipient has to approve or reject this item. I can see that this um, approval task has been, has been completed and that an action has been um, called, so an API has been called in the backend system as for HANA Cloud. And after that, this process instance has been successfully completed. So this in a nutshell is how we monitor processes in a technical way. Of course, we have the process visibility, um, uh, the more business monitoring in um, the Fiori Launchpad uh, service, and uh, this will be, covered, will be covered in another video. So moving on, uh, besides uh, processes, we will also want to um, monitor our automations, right? So we can click on automation jobs. 
you can see here um, yeah, a list of all the automations that have been um, assigned or been uh, have run during this time period. As you see, during this time period of today, I don't have any um, automation jobs running. Let's open the filter up for a couple of months back until now. And I should see a couple of automation jobs that have been run. Um, you see what the automation um, what the automation name is, what the status of the uh, doing of the job has been, has it been successful, failed or expired because no bot, for example, has taken over running this automation. You can see which project this automation belongs to, what the version of the automation is, um, which machine, so which agent has taken over running this automation, uh, what type of trigger and of course the timestamp when this um, job has run, including the duration of the, of the yeah, running job. Um, if you click on a specific automation here, you can, similar to the process uh, monitoring, you can see a more detailed view of the um, automation job. So who has, uh, who has been trying to make this job run? When has it run? And also if you encounter any errors, it will display here under status history. If you configure any notifiers or alert handlers, you can also see the details down below. So the next thing I would like to show you is how you manage your artifacts. So this is where we go under the section manage and you can click on process and workflows, for example, to check if we want to manage our processes. So here in this system, you can see that I have deployed 23 processes so far. Similar to the um, monitoring of instances, I can scroll up and down to select my process, I can also search them in the search bar here. Let's do that again. I type in purchase. I can select the process that I would like to look into. I can see that uh, the idea of the process here again, including the deployed version of it. So if I want to monitor only process instances of this particular process, I can click on show instance here on the bottom uh, right and it will display me only this uh, yeah pro instances of this process as you see so it is automatically filtered that for me here on the top corner going back into the manage part let me type in again purchase <clears throat> and I select my process here again I can also if I don't want to trigger this process via a form submission, for example, I can also use the start new instance button here on the bottom right to create uh, my process instance. Uh, so instead of filling out the form, so you have a field product and you fill out the, uh, the value with Hamlet, for example, you can paste in a um, yeah, the data in the JSON format here and uh, start a new instance as well. And if you are interested in the model of your process, you can also download here uh, with this button. It will download the whole model, including all the details in it, in a JSON format for you. So now let's move on to the automations. So automation having a separate section as they can be configured differently. You have, as you might know, unattended automations, so automations that a user does not need to attend for them to be triggered, for example, because a workflow in, uh, so a process invokes this automation. But there are also options like attended automation, so a user being the triggering uh, factor here to uh, activate the automation. Also the options of API trigger and schedule trigger. So API trigger in this example is um, yeah, you, you set up this trigger, it creates an endpoint. So let's have a look at that. It creates an endpoint where maybe another system can call this endpoint, um, insert the auth um, security authorization via API key here, for example, and send in a specific payload to uh, trigger this automation. You can also here in this, uh, um, yeah, in this overview, see which triggers you have set up 
for which uh, automation and in which project these automations belong. You can simply delete them here, disable or delete them here on the right side. For example, this one I would like to delete. And you can see it disappears from the system. These are the attended automations as I mentioned and the scheduled automation would be an example um, interval based, right? So you would like to have this automation run on a daily basis, every five weeks, every two minutes, for example. This is the stuff of scheduling that you can perform for your automation. So how, as a user, how can I set up a new trigger? I can simply press on the plus icon here on the top right corner. I select my project where I want to set a trigger for, where I know an automation job is part of this project. For example, I select this one here, I press next. I have these three options here to set up an API trigger, calling from another system, this API triggers this process. I can set it as attended that I as a user with my desktop agent can trigger this uh, automation or I set it to schedule that every, um, yeah, in a specific interval at that time, this automation gets triggered. So for this example, let's choose API trigger. I press next. And then here you can see that I can give this automation a specific name. Let's call it two because we have already API one. I can say which automation in particular should be executed. So in this project, I have two automation jobs. I select for example, this automation named home automation. Um, I can select a distribution restriction policy, meaning that if I set it to no restriction, any available agent that is connected to this particular SAP pros automation will pick up this automation job and run it for me. However, if I would like a specific agent to pick up this automation job for me, I can select agents matching attributes and select an attribute. For example, I have maintained this attribute beforehand that I say, okay, if the main matches my name, which is Huang, then a specific, so, and then my agent will pick up this job. So once I'm happy with the setup here, I click on create, and then you see that this URL gets generated for my API trigger. Um, I will give it to someone who would like to invoke it and then they can invoke this um, this API endpoint and sending over this payload in this kind of structure. And if I close this window, you can see now that I have a new API trigger, which I named API2. And you can see here that it has this attribute that I gave it with a name. And you can see here that there is one agent which matches this attribute. So going to the visibility scenarios, the last part of the manage section, we can see all the visibility scenarios which have been deployed in our system. In this case, it's about 10 of them. You can see, um, so once you have a visibility scenario in your project, it will, and you deploy the project, it will appear in this list. Um, if you would like it to um, pull data into um, your dashboards in your launchpad service, you need to remember to activate the schedule job here and it will by default schedule the info for five minutes. And here you can see that it pulls every five minutes the, um, the events, right? So currently this process has not been run in the last five minutes. It's, uh, that's why it's all to zero. But if you have run this process um, in the last couple of minutes, you should see yeah, this number being a lot more than zero, of course.